Big, heavy ocean crossing sailboats tend to lack some amenities, but the boats that come with those amenities like sugar scoops and aft cabins tend to be light duty, like production boats. But what if you could have both? Battleship build quality with all the modern stuff. This is Noxtella, an aft cockpit Passport Vista 545. And while she's amazing, as you'll see, she has some stiff competition, which I'm also going to show you. We talked about ballast to displacement in a previous video. Production boats tend to be about 25% ballast to displacement and big ocean going cruisers tend to be much higher. And this Passport Vista 545 definitely falls into the heavier category at 38% ballast. This near 40,000 pounds of boat was designed by Bill Dixon, the same guy who did most of the Moody's and some of the big Hylas boats. A fin keel and skeg rudder on this 15 foot beam monster of a boat actually nets her a fairly high performance, especially when you get all the canvas up on both of these rollers. The Passport gives us all the telltales of a world cruiser, very high stanchions to keep you on board, a big robust pulpit at the front, and high bulwarks all the way around. And this particular boat gets used. The owners are on the east coast and they sail her pretty continuously. Looking aft, we get stainless handholds and clip-in eyes for jack lines just about everywhere we could ever need them because this boat was meant to be at sea. The Selden in-mast furling rig stands at an ICW friendly 63 and a half feet. So she's right at the limit of East Coast intracoastal travel. And the lines are all of course led aft under a big hard dodger, another telltale of a world cruiser. And we get both inboard and outboard head sail tracks leading back to the big protected cockpit flanked by Harkin winches, the primaries being electric. On the aft deck, there's a huge locker full of diving gear for these owners and a set of davits for their composite dinghy. The glass and woodwork on this boat is top notch and the fine finish is a testament to how good Passport really is at building these big boats, which are still built in Taiwan where this world cruising battleship style of boat owes a lot of its heritage from way back in the Bob Perry days. A tip of the hat to you, Bob. Inside, we're greeted by a modern and extremely functional interior space with all the proper woodwork and joinery we'd expect on a near million dollar boat. Aft starboard is a double berth aft cabin, which seems reasonable, but remember what I said about this boat's competition. Keep this cabin in mind. The day head is adjacent with a wet side for the shower and toilet. Forward is a proper nav station with all the electrics and switch gear to run the boat, followed by a proper master stateroom up front. The woodwork in here is exceptional and it feels very classy and an expensive place to be. Storage up front is extremely robust and the island bed is large and roomy. The master gets its own head with a proper space for the shower this time. Coming aft, we get the big C-shaped SETI, followed by an exceptionally useful galley with all the storage and amenities that we could ask for. But this boat's party piece has got to be the mechanical room on the port side, a large area housing the engine and generator access with a roof that opens via the cockpit lazarette lid. So you can actually stand up in here and get lots of natural light for whatever you happen to be working on. Coming all the way aft, you get full access to the steering and autopilot systems. This passport is a gem and what a privilege it was to get on board for a tour. But that led to the big question for near a million dollars that we found these listed for, what else could you buy? This is obviously big catamaran money, but sticking to big, heavy ocean going cruising monohulls, the nearest competition we could find was the Hylus 56, also around a million dollars, also around 55 foot LOA and also 15 feet wide. Also well made and luxurious and intended to cross oceans and go world cruising. Also less than 10 years old and also built in Taiwan. By all metrics, these boats seem the same, but they're not. Where the Passport may do with almost 15,000 pounds of ballast in the keel, the Hylus has over 20. Where the whole Passport weighed nearly 40,000 pounds, the Hylus is 50. Where the Passport has tankage of 250 gallons of fuel and 250 of water, the Hylus doubles it 
at 500 gallons apiece. But maybe the most important thing for the million dollar monohull shopper is accommodation. For that kind of money in an ocean crossing, world traveling monohull, you might expect a bit more than that passport offered. Our friends over at Dave Walters Yachts had a Hylus 56 and did a video tour that I'm going to show you. It was on their excellent YouTube channel that I'll link in the description. And with that tour and the passport in mind, see if you can spot the differences with the Hylus. On the top side, these two boats are so similar that I'm not really going to bore you with the subtle differences on deck because inside they are very different. The Hylus is significantly more luxurious with a big change being her galley style galley running down the hallway where the passport we got the L shape in the main saloon. You may prefer the L shape in the main saloon while you're entertaining, but this galley style may be more closed in and a little bit claustrophobic, but it's easier to use in a rough sea. The main living area of this Hylus, even though it has the same beam as the passport, feels significantly larger and more spacious and the fit and finish, if not equal to the passport, might be even better. But it's back here where we find the big difference. Where the passport got that tight double berth aft cabin you'd sort of put a couple people in in a pinch, the Hylus gets a full on master stateroom at the back. The Hylus is a proper center cockpit, so it allows for more room in the back. And this is what they did with it. This room is gorgeous and it makes this Hylus a proper two stateroom boat with these full on accommodations for two couples to enjoy private spaces with their own heads at opposite ends of the boat. And the heads are bigger with bigger showers. The Hylus gets more and bigger port lights with more natural light coming in. The Hylus is just somehow more in just about every measurable way, except price. They're, they're relatively the same. If you're shopping for a yacht of this caliber, I'd strongly suggest getting on board both of these amazing boats and experiencing them both for yourself. They are both gorgeous, extremely capable out in the ocean and heavy safe cruisers that will get you wherever in the world that you want to go safely and comfortably. Check out Dave Walters Yachts if you're boat shopping and while I have you, subscribe to our channel here. We release new videos every Saturday and Monday and leave a comment today. Which one of these boats would you buy? If you were shopping in this price range, would you buy a monohull at all or would you steer toward a big cat? Or would you buy something cheaper and invest the rest of the money in significant upgrades? Love to hear from you.